Hey, what's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Uh, today, uh, we're continuing with the boathouse rebuild. We're going to make some uh, roof rafters. Uh, my son, Derek, uh, he has a woodland mill sawmill, and he milled up some 2x6 uh, spruce rough lumber for me to make my roof trusses out of. Uh, so the other day, when all the boys were here, uh, stripping down the boathouse and getting ready to rebuild it, uh, my grandson, Logan, was with them, Derek's boy. And uh, Logan came up here to the shop and gave me a hand to cut out some of this 2x6 rough lumber to start making the rafters. So Logan and I cut the uh, peak angle and the tail angle on the rafter pieces. And now today what I'm up to is I have to cut out the bird's mouths and uh, make gussets. So that's what we're going to try and accomplish today. So the other day my grandson Logan and I went to work and we, uh, we salvaged a couple of the rafters from the old boathouse. And then we took measurements off of those and uh, carefully laid out the length and the peak and tail cuts. So I just want to show you what we started with. These right here are the two by fours that we that were the rafters. So because of the design of the roof where it's kind of like a shed roof, looks like a bus stop eh, with a long sloping back and then a sharp peak in the front if you remember that from pictures of the boathouse before it was destroyed. <laughs> well the front angle is a 12-12 the back angle is a 412, so we had to lay out and be careful of our angle cuts and everything to get those lined up. So this is what we ended up with. There's the four foot piece. I don't have the bird's mouth cut in that yet. And then underneath that is the long piece. That's about 10 foot or more. So uh, what I'm going to do now is try to set up on my sliding saw, sliding compound miter, and cut the bird's mouths out. All right, I think I'm set to cut this first cut here. So let's see how we make out. There you see, it's, it's at the right depth. That's where I wanted to go to. So that worked out all right. Let me just clean this up a little bit. So there we have our first rafter. This is the bird's mouth and the peak cut. Well, it's not our first rafter. It's half of the first rafter. Now we have to do the same thing on this short one. But it's more or less the same process. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these. And when I get a bunch cut, I'll show you the results. Then we have to lay out and make gussets. Okay, here's my long leg rafters and even up here where I cut the bird's mouth if you look quick they all look about the same <laughs> this is the important edge and they're all pretty well even I got the short legs cut now with the bird's mouth in them and when you look at those well, they look almost as good as uh, <laughs> this can be expected so there's a roof rafter this leg here is the front of the boathouse. This long leg is the back. So now what I need to do is cut some 3 8 inch plywood to make a gusset for this side and then the other side. But there's one of these rafters that goes against the far, like the lake side of the boathouse and it'll only have a gusset on the one side. So, All right, uh, we're continuing with our rafters now. It's the next day. <laughs> Yeah, a full day's work for me now is not very long, so it's taken two days to do this. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to lay out my roof rafters to make gussets. This is a sample gusset that came off the roof that got destroyed. If you notice my gussets, I have a long side and a short side, and they're different angles, right? So I just put this gusset on here just to check, and the angles match up pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I have to make a bunch of duplicates of this gusset. So this gusset here... This gusset, the original one, was just 3 8 plywood. And I put one on either side at the peak of the roof rafters. So that's why I call them hybrid roof rafters. Anyway, I have here a piece, uh, a leftover piece of ranch wall that's 3 uh, eighths of an inch thick. And I think I have enough here to make as many of these uh, gussets as I will need. This pattern is seven and a half inches to the top. So I'm gonna set the fence up again and I'm just gonna rip a bunch of seven and a half pieces off of this. So what I want to do now is cut these to length. 
So now I can just slide that in there. It's up against the fence. I know that this distance is 16 inches. Then I can cut it, slide the next piece in and cut it. And I've got a good fence here to hold my piece against nice and safe. So let's cut some up and see what happens. take my pattern and I'm going to center it as best I can on the blank and then I'm going to draw this line for this slope and then this line for that slope. And now what I can do is I can take and set my blank against the fence here, this corner, this back corner, set it against the fence, align that edge and that edge with the slot in my sled, right? Like that. And now if I draw this line out like that. As long as all my pieces are the same width, and they are because I, I ripped them, then if I put each piece, line it up on that line, and hold it as straight and true as I can, I should be able to cut that and it should work out good. So let's try one or two and see how it works out. So three ought to be good for a test. So when you put those on there, they're all cut to the right. They're all they're all matching up is what I'm trying to say. That lined up pretty good right there. And then if I put this line down here, as long as I line my pieces up on this line, that'll work. So let's cut a couple of these and see how they work. I'm going to now go to work and finish cutting the other 12 gussets and my gussets will be ready. Now what I'm going to do just to make sure after cutting all these and using up all my wood, I'm going to put one of these on the rafter that I've laid out on the floor just to see how the angles line up. So let's go try it with this one. All right, so there's my rafter with the uh, miter joint there pretty tight. So uh, when I look at my, my uh, gussets, I've got a short side and a long side so this goes on the long leg so if we line that up nice and flush there nice and flush there so that should work good i'm also going to put some pl premium on here just to make sure that that sticks well i'm down here in the boathouse and trying to lay out some roof trusses so there's my long leg there's a the short leg and i got the tape laid in there and from uh, that bird's mouth to this bird's mouth. When I measure the wall, it's 121 inches. When I set this up, that, if you can see that, it's about 121 and a half. If we get it up there and it's a little bit too wide, I can kind of maybe squeeze it together. But by doing that, I force my walls apart. So I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out. The walls do have a little bit of a wow in them in the middle right now because of the way the tree fell on it, pushed the walls out. I should have made that peak cut here. A little more acute. <laughs> it is kind of a cute cut now, but a little more cuter. <laughs> and uh, that way, the distance between the bird's mouths would have been uh, shorter, and then I could push the walls together to, to meet up with that. But anyway, we're going to live with this. All right. So with this long leg wedged in the corner, I put a piece of block here and a block here. And then I took the short leg and I wedged that piece at the end of it there to hold it in place. And a block there and a block there and uh, I can get my gusset on now and there's just a slight little gap there oh well it's not slight it's pretty big actually about a quarter of an inch don't think it's gonna be bad though but I did that because now from that bird's mouth to that bird's mouth is 121 inches which is what the wall measures so I'm gonna you know go with that gap at the peak in order to get the, uh, the bird's mouth to line up and maybe pull my walls back and keep them from bowing so we set that gusset so that the gap, uh, the peak is in the middle here. 
and then I'm using my ring nails to put this on. Alright, put this guy on this side. Uh, there's still a couple of pieces of the uh, fascia board on there and they're holding the tail so I have to muscle it in a little bit. If you check along the bottom edges Pretty flush there. Pretty flush down there. So it fit up there pretty good. I like it. it uh, I'm glad I left that little gap at the peak because it fits nice and snug now between over the walls, which is what I wanted. That's going to hold the, the middle of the walls in. Uh, the truss lines up very good with the bottom of the 2x4, of the original 2x4, but of course, because these are made out of 2x6, they're higher on the outside. So I'm going to go with this and uh, what I have to do now is for that last gable uh, hybrid truss I have to cut a piece of one and a half inch uh, material just to fill in that gap so that won't be anything you know serious that's not a showstopper that's for sure. All right so I'm going to go to work now and uh, build up a bunch more trusses and uh, we'll get ready next time the boys are out they, he, they can help me put these trusses up. Well now, I think those hybrid rafters are going to work out all right, eh? I uh, put that one together and I jumped on it, little old me jumped on it, but uh, you know, that's a pretty good test, seemed pretty strong. Uh, the 2x4 uh, hybrid rafter that I had there before lasted for 10 years without any issues <laughs> until that big tree fell on it, but I can't blame the hybrid rafter system for failing after that big tree fell, so I think these are going to be plenty strong enough. But one thing I forgot to do that I said I was going to do is I was going to put PL Premium between the gussets and the rafters, and I didn't do that, so I'll have to remember to do that for the rest of them. So anyways, I'll take this rafter that I just built now, and I'll make sure that that one goes in the center that's just used for nailing, and I'll put the PL Premium on the other gussets to hold the rest of the rafters together, and she should be good. Then we can put some sheathing on there, get some shingles on it, and we'll be pretty near in business. So, thanks for watching. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, thumbs up me, eh? That's important. And click like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And you can tell your friends about my channel and spread the word that Grampy's Workshop, not a bad spot to spend 15, 20 minutes twice a week. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you. Oh, stay safe. <laughs>